Hey everybody, it's me, Rick Acosta, the Dodger Card Collector, coming to you with another video. Today is Friday, December 6th. Have you started your Christmas shopping yet? <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I really have to think about that. I'm one of those guys that, when it comes to Christmas, uh, it'll literally be like the 10th through the 15th, where all of a sudden I buy all my gifts all at once. Um, the only hard gift I have, which is hobby-related actually, um, will be buying for my brother-in-law. I think some of you know this uh, from my, some of my previous conversations with you guys, is that uh, I buy my brother, usually, I won't say vintage, it used to be vintage, but I'll buy him a basketball card every year, a graded basketball card. Um, I think I started with the Kobe Bryant rookie, then I bought him a Lou Alcindor second year, one of those tall boy cards. Last year, I bought him a Magic Johnson second year card. But last year, I also bought him a uh, 12 card Penzani display case because he loved my display cases so much that uh, he, he kept asking me about it. So I bought him one of those. And then in March, I got invited to my sister's house uh, for his birthday. And I couldn't go empty handed. So at the last second, I was able to find just some LeBron James card. Uh, I think I found it for like $18, like in a PSA 9. Some modern card. I can't even tell you what it was. Just so I didn't show up empty-handed. And when I showed up to his house to give him the gift, he said, Oh, let me show you my display case. And I honestly thought I would see four cards. And my brother-in-law went off and started buying all these Dr. J, Larry Bird uh, Dwayne Wade cards, Pau pa Gasol. Uh, he kind of caught the fever. And uh, at one point we were like, he was showing me these cards. And I remember going, he wanted to show me something that was in a drawer. And when I, when we got to his drawer, I found one of those uh, eBay blue boxes that you get if the card's been authenticated by PSA. And I said, you bought an expensive card? And he's like, yeah. And I go, be I had to warn him, be careful because, uh, it could become an addiction, and he said he noticed it too. And then what did he buy? He bought like a 1977 Julius Ir Tops Julius Irving, like in a PSA 7, something like that. Nice card. I'll have to show you guys a video of his display case. But uh, this year I'm thinking of, and I know he's not watching because he doesn't know I have a YouTube channel. I'm looking at some type of Shaquille O'Neal card on the Lakers in a PSA, and probably a James Worthy card. Um, Maybe, maybe like an upper deck card, something like that. I don't know much about basketball cards. I do know about basketball and the Lakers. Uh, I don't know much about basketball. And uh, he seems to be happy with vintage and modern. So that's the plan for Christmas. Uh, but for Hobby-wise, at least. For me, hobby-wise, Christmas, it, it's going to be quiet. Uh, today, I'm going to show you some, some pickups that most likely could be my last pickups of the year, though I did find out just a few days ago there is a small local card show next weekend in Orange County, somewhere in Orange, probably by the block, and I found out my friend Mitch will be there, <laughs> and I thanked him for, uh, thanked him sarcastically for letting me know that he was going to be selling at a show, so if you're watching Mitch, thanks. Because he's going to be there, I plan on being there as well. Just because I haven't seen Mitch in a while and I want to see what 1950 Bowmans he has. Plus, I just love staring at whatever cards he has that I can't afford to buy. So, it'll give me one last opportunity to look at cards this year. Because uh, I am looking at some cards on eBay, but nothing exciting. And uh, 
this we have this show i don't plan on making any lcs runs to burbank or uh, maybe to my store in huntington beach uh baseball cards plus or surf city cards whatever moniker they go by just because i need to buy some not top loaders i need to buy some sheets so that's the plan hobby other than that i will probably spend a lot of time just curating my collection i'm waiting for some binder sleeves that i showed off in my last video to arrive sometime next week and at that point i need to make some photocopies of some of my psa cards uh just because i need to my 1968 and my 1965 uh sets no my 1968 1963 sets uh i still have blank slots of the of the graded cards so i want to fill them with photocopies of uh of the graded cards i own so that's really what I got hobby-wise. And as I mentioned, uh, I saw a video a few weeks ago. Oh, and I don't know who it was. It's one of the larger channels. And uh, these guys were, it was a group of three guys. And they were talking about, um, they just wanted, to, one of the guys specifically s said he wanted to spend um, the holidays and the first part of the year just enjoying his collection. We spent so much time in the hunt for the cards and i'm one of those we spend so much time and then we buy the card and we're happy and five minutes later we're looking for another card so i heard that too and i was kind of like going there there are a couple of shows in february that i'll hit up obviously um in uh, the second week of february and the last week of february something around there um, but i'm not looking for any big cards yes i i have big cards on my watch list but we're talking like $2,000 cards, and I'm not buying those anytime soon. So um, just going forward, um, I'll probably mention what I'm doing going forward just in the cards I'm going to show you. Just because I don't have many cards to show, and the only reason I made a video is because I wanted to talk to you guys. Just because uh, it's been 10 days, and I still want to talk to you guys and let you know what I'm up to and see how you're doing. Because uh, I love the comments, and I've gotten some good feedback uh, in, in regards to my last video. Some of you I need to reply to because you had really good ideas, and I just haven't been on YouTube that much. Uh, and it, I honestly, when I am watching YouTube, I'm just watching a lot of the hot stove stuff when it comes to baseball. But Juan, Juan Soto, as of Friday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon... Has not signed. Uh, I'm hearing he's going to sign in the next few days, which is going to set the dominoes. And I'm curious to see who the Yankees get, who the Mets get. Hopefully the Dodgers wrap up Teoscar Hernandez. And we'll see what happens from there. But I, I could do baseball 365-7. That's how much I love baseball. Even though I am watching a lot of football these days. And uh, I'm sure the Buffalo Bills are going to come to California this weekend and destroy my Rams. But uh We'll see what happens. So let me turn the camera around. Let me show you some cards. And we'll see what happens. Thanks, guys. All right. Before I show you my latest pickups, um, I got this in the mail a few minutes ago. And I was looking at it. And I just had to chuckle. I was texting my buddy Eric. And I go, look at this card. This 1915 Cracker Jack Joe Jackson in an SGC9 Population 2. The estimate's going to be 800000 plus. And I was just chuckling. So I looked through this, and there's some great cards, you guys. You should check it out if you if you have a lot of money, which I don't. The one thing that I do like looking for, and um, Heritage just had an auction close the other day. You guys know I own a 1941 play ball set. It's all graded. And someone last week who was number six on the set registry, he sold his set uh, through Heritage for $65,000. Now, I'm number 23 on the set, so my condition's not as nice. But now we've got another gentleman on here. Where is it? Right here. And he is selling his 72 card set from the play ball. Um, it's TBD on where he is on the on the set registry. But I, I, I do like to pay attention to that. Not, not that I'm about to sell my collection. But I do like to keep an eye on, on the cops when it comes to 1941 in case there, there comes a day when I do need to unload the set. While I don't expect to get $60,000 or $80,000, I mean, God, maybe 10 years from now, but not today. 
Um, but I just like looking through this and I get this little catalog every, every few weeks. So it was just kind of fun to look at while I was sitting here. Technically, I'm supposed to be working right now, you guys. Um, so I was doing that while I was waiting uh, for an email to arrive from a coworker. All right, so what have I picked up lately? Um, I'll show you what I've got, and this will allow me to discuss the current projects that I'm working on. First card is a 1969 Topps Raleigh Fingers rookie card, along with Bob Floyd and Larry Burkhart, who I have no clue who they are. And uh, this is continuing what I call my 1969 sampler set. Um, I picked 20% of the set to, pit, uh, to purchase. And uh, with, it included like the all the you know the All Star cards, the World Series cards, and basically some cards that I really wanted. And one of the cards that I really wanted was this Raleigh Fingers card. I already own the Reggie, I own the Ryan, I own the Bench. Um, I need five more cards to finish this fabricated set. One of them being Mickey Mantle. Uh, I'll get that in sometime in 2025. But uh, this is my Raleigh Fingers rookie card. All right, next up, lately I haven't seen these a lot more online, and that's kind of, it excites me and worries me at the same time. And that are these Morel Meats cards I've spoken to you off and on for the past year. Uh, Clean Sweep Auctions, their store had this Maury Wills card, 1961 Morel Meats. This one was taken at night. That's the Coliseum in the background. If this were a, a photo taken during the day, you'd get a better shot of these. One thing that you guys already know this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, just in case you don't know. If you see a card that you like on eBay and the seller is Clean Sweep Auctions, go to their website. Um, this card on eBay was 55 bucks. I went to the Clean Sweep Auctions and it was 40 so think about that before you go buying cards, any cards. If you know that, if you see a card on eBay and you really like it and you'd like to see if you can find it cheaper, go see if they have an individual website uh, because you'll find the card cheaper. You won't have to pay sales tax. You might even get a deal on shipping. So that's my 1961 Morel Meets uh, Maury Wills. And there, since this is the only 61 I'm showing off to you, there are six of these cards. Morel Meats are all Dodgers, by the way. I have two of them. So I have two of the six cards. Uh, a couple of more Morel Meats cards I found, uh, both from 1960. The first one is Walter Alston. In 1960 Morel Meats, there are 12 Dodger cards, and this is the set you're gonna find most when it comes to finding these cards. Um, the PSA pop is still low compared to like a regular basic set out there. Now this card and the next card I'm going to show you, these are authentic altered. The only thing I can think is that they have been trimmed. I did measure them. I found that they were the I thought I, I think they're the size the right size, but maybe I'm off by like some 164th or something. So there's this Walter Alston card in front of the Dodger dugout, probably again at the Coliseum. And then the next card is Don Drysdale, 1960. And uh, again, authentic altered, measured this card as well. And if it's, if it's been altered because it was a trim, it was trimmed very slightly on here. I don't know if somebody's touched something up, you guys, if somebody, if one of you ever comes over to my house, you'll have to look at these cards and tell me what's wrong with them. But here is um, Drysdale and then Alston. Uh, you might say, Rick, why are you buying altered cards? Um, because that cost me $20, that cost me $25. And they're a lot more expensive um, if I had buy them, bought them as a PSA 5 or a PSA 6. As I mentioned, the 1960 set of the Dodgers Morel Meats is 12 cards. Oh, I've got like half of them. Uh, one of them's still Koufax, though, so and Duke Snyder. But these are just fun sets that were released in uh, from 1959 to 1961 that I like to show every so often. And I um, have my eye on a few more. And like I say, there's they're starting to pop up online. So don't don't beat me to these cards, you guys. 
Okay, uh, what do I got? I got two cards coming up. Uh, you guys know I have been working on guys that not, did not make it onto the 1941 play ball set. And the first card was Gabby Hartnett. And I bought this 1933 uh, Gowdy from, I think it was from For Love of the Game. I totally lowballed this and nobody bid. So I won it for like $80. It's a PSA 1. Yeah, it's got a crease. It's not the most beautiful, but it's still a good looking card. So uh, nobody outbid me. So um, this is my Gabby Hartnett ad addition to my collection. And it's always fun to add um, a Hall of Famer to your collection that you don't previously have. So there's Gabby Hartnett. And then my last one for this set, um, a 1934 Diamond Stars, Lloyd Wayner. I won this in an auction from Clean Sweep Auctions. I don't know if people, uh, I don't know if people are just not buying or not looking, but I won this card for under a hundred. Um, it just seems like people uh, maybe just aren't paying attention. There are a lot of auctions. It seems like REA has an auction every few weeks. I know Huggins and Scott has an auction going on right now. Heritage has an auction. There's a lot of auctions going on, and you might be able to score a deal here. And I'm not going to tell you what cards I currently have auctions on, but um, there's some cards on Clean Sweep, you guys. And just pay attention to them, because you never know what's going to happen there. So this is my Lloyd Wayner. Love the colors in the back. This is a great set. If I could get my hands on a Hank Greenberg and a Lefty Grove... Maybe I'd start this set. I have, I have maybe around 10 cards from this set. Uh, but this is a Lloyd Wayner set. And I need three more cards to finish um, this this fabricated guys that didn't make it onto the 1941 play ball set. I need three more cards. Uh, one of them is a 38 Gaudi Al Lopez. I would prefer it with the scribbles on it, with the writing. Uh, what else? Uh, 34 Diamond Stars Luke Appling. And also a 34 Diamond Stars Ducky Medwick. Show Ducky Medwick. And sometimes when I look at those cards, they're bloody expensive. So it's going to be a while. But that is Lloyd Wayner. And then my last card for today is the 1950 Bowman set that I'm currently working on. And I was able to win this 1950 Bowman Ted Williams in a PSA 3. You know, I got a 1955 Ted Williams Tops card in a PSA 1. It was given to me ungraded as a child. I was 14 or 15. And I thought that would be the only Ted Williams card I ever owned. Now I have this card in the 57 Tops in the 1941 Play Ball. And it's just, it's fun having Ted Williams in your set. But I was able to pick this up at a good deal. Because I've been looking at this card for several months. And I was finally able to track one down. I actually bought this from Chris Sewell, uh, Collector Invest Auctions, CIA. Um, you really should check them out, guys. They, they have, uh, they've got good prices, nice cards, good prices. And the thing is, the buyer's premium, which is normally 20% with other auction houses, is only 15 at the moment through CIA. So there's a plug for you, uh, Chris. No, he does not sponsor my channel. He doesn't even know who I am. So um, I've met his partner, Jeremy. I met him at the Burbank show. But so that is my 1950 Bowman Ted Williams. I am waiting. That's the last big card I need. I am waiting for one more graded card to arrive, which is not a, not a Hall of Famer, still a good card. And after I receive that, I will have, um, I need 56 cards to finish the 19 um 1950 Bowman set. The I would say the bigger cards are going to be uh, guys like Enos Slaughter, Ralph Kiner, Casey Stingle. I'm at that point. Um, I've collected all the big-time cards. So it'll be fun. But if you stuck around this long, you guys, thanks so much for hanging around. And we'll talk to you next time. Take care. It's a beautiful day.